So this is hacking web file servers for iOS, and this is a very practical presentation. It's a very fast presentation as well. So I will try to demonstrate uh, and show you the vulnerabilities that I found and I've been disclosing right now by Trustwave. And um, hope you enjoy it. So a little bit about me. Okay, just a little bit about me. My name is Bruno Gonçalves de Oliveira. I am a senior security consultant at Trustwave Spider Labs. I'm an MSc candidate, computer engineer. Uh, I spent all my life working with offensive security. I already have done some talks at Super Bowl, Totcon, Source Boston, Black Hat, Source, Defcon, Hack in the Box, Turcon, Shadow Sheriff, and Hackers to Hackers Conference. So I'm around. Um, and this is what I, we're going to talk today. Well, uh, first of all, I will tell you a little history. Uh, so I had to write a blog post, you know, for my bonus. <laughs> then I think, well, I am started looking for a subject. And then, well, nothing's more current than talk about mobile applications because, you know, now everybody just use your cell phones, your iPads and everything. And then um, became very interesting a long time ago. So it's a lot of information here in, in smartphones. And iPhone is very popular, very popular. And while it took around, took in, um, a search on the applications and uh, an inspection of, we can see that mobile applications are mostly poorly designed. And, and that encouraged me to do this talk. And at the, in the end, you see very old-fashioned vulnerabilities that are very interesting. And when you put it together with another technique, you can see great results. So that's why. That's what we are discussing today. OK, so what are those applications that I'm talking about? So how many of you have already downloaded a file in your iPhone to share a file or to store a file? So I know some, you know? Yeah, it doesn't need to be shamed, you know? <laughs> So these are uh, these. Uh, it's very popular those uh, softwares. Uh, I when I started this research, I asked for some uh, some coworkers to, hey, did you use this type of application? And many of them, yeah, we do. You know, uh, we use this application. You know, for store files, sometimes you have a friend, hey, can you pass this file or can you upload this file for me? And this is the easiest way. So this is designed to provide storage system to your iOS devices. Since uh, by default, I don't know, uh, I don't know for iOS 7, but I know until iOS 6, by default you can upload a file or store a file, or share a file with anyone with just the full features from the, your iOS device. So everybody downloads this soft, this kind of software and do what they want to do. So the app can be transferred to using Bluetooth, iTunes, and FTP. So beyond the easiest way that, that the web server, uh, the data can be transferred to using Bluetooth. So you can utilize Bluetooth, iTunes. The iTunes has, I don't know, it's some stupid way to transfer a file that. And then and FTP. And as I said, they are very popular. And that's motivated me to do this talk. Well, if you do a little research on iTunes Store, we are talking, we are not talking about uh, jailbroken uh, applications or applications that you can find on Cydia and applications that can install using any, you know, uh, after you jailbroken your phone. No, we are talking about iTunes Store uh, applications. So if you do a little research about FTP web server or web file server, or web file, you find a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. 
And so what I did, I took some of them, a bunch of them, analyzed it, and you see what happened. Well, as I said, some features are just to manage, store files, create albums, so you can upload just pictures and create albums for everybody to see. You can, you can share that. And well, let's get to the chase. So, I will present to you some vulnerabilities that I found and also some vulnerabilities that are, that are well, <laughs> I did this, uh, this research in, in March, in this year, and uh, some other people basically took the same way and find some stuff in the middle of the year. However, they didn't find my vulnerabilities. <laughs> For God's sake, right? So, first of all, the first thing that you, you will see on these applications, you see that basically to compromise the data that are being uh, stored or being shared is very, very easy. The, first of all, they're not being encrypted at all. Some of them, they, they have the option to encrypt or you can enable and you can do a lot of stuff. However, uh, it's not, it's not by the full. Well, so here you go. So just some samples from, you can see that it's not being encrypted, no SSL at all. And, and also you can check it how it's being done. So basically the web servers are like this. It's just a web, it's just a, better? Better. And then, wow. Okay. Still loud. And um, so, as you can see, this is a simple app application when you download it, and then you, they will start a port on, you start a service on your, in your iPhone and then you can access, as you can see, barely see, right? So you can see a lot, there are a port 8080, then you can there browse your, your file and then upload it. And basically, it's how it's done in all these applications. You say, you just upload your file and then there is your file. In this case, I'm demonstrating that no encryption. And also, no authentication, and I wanted to make sure that for that, that's by the full. So all these applications, if you can, if all these applications, when you access those, you will see that you, some of them has the feature to, to enable the, the authentication, however, it's not by the full. So it's probably not by the full on in ever, in every application that do that. So as you can see here, they do have the option to enable, but it's not. Just to illustrate. Uh, then we can still go on on the vulnerabilities. Uh, you see a simple reflected cross type scripting. So, of course, I, 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 I'm not publishing uh, what is this vendor, but you, you probably can find this in a lot of uh, applica in a lot of applications, and this is just a sample just to for you. Then we have persistent cross type scripting. Okay, so at this point, I'm not disclosing my vulnerabilities. I'm just showing you the vulnerabilities that I don't know who found, but I know the company and stuff, but I don't know who found. So basically, you just. Um, set a new album as your, as a script, and in the end, you got that uh, executed when you access. So, would I be to labs? I don't know if I'll add labs. So, they have some visitors talking about a bunch of uh, this kind of applications that I just talked about. So as you can see, it's just uh, the most of it is just um, injecting script and injecting HTML. So probably the most of them I didn't try at all. 
but I know I tried some and I, I could see that. Then, well, first way, well, you know, me, did this research on MASH and just, we are now just disclosing these vulnerabilities and you, you see that the most of them, they, are, they really don't care about security. Why I'm talking about that? Because when you see just one vendor responded, uh, uh, our when we, we ask him uh, to fix the vulnerability, so just one vendor responded, and the most serious flaw is still vulnerable. So uh, anyone that's using is vulnerable to this vulnerability. So you can see that, and it's it's very important in the end of this presentation because. You know, we just download software from our to our iPhones and all the time. Just ah, I need I don't know, I need fart sounds for yeah, and download it, and and that's being done for everything that we need. So you have to take care because uh, if Apple is not taking care of us, we have to take care of us. So the first thing that I uh, will show you is the path transversal that I found on multiple softwares. I I only uh, disclosed three. One fix it. Oh, wow. And I show you right here. So here I'm demonstrating the path transversal that I found. So we're just accessing the the web server as as you can see, and then I'm just demonstrating uh, that you can access some folder that I create inside the phone, and then utilizing. Go ahead, Bruno. So then it's Lizzie encoding on the backslash. You can access. The password file, for example. So uh, I don't know why it is so bad. So as you can see, uh, even this is this is not a jailbroken iPhone. Uh, you can access the file system even your phone is not jailbroken. So, as you can see in this, uh, no, this is a, a jailbroken iPhone. And I say why? Can can tell me why this this is an iPhone that is jailbroken? I will give you one beer after the talk. Uh, here you go. Uh, so if you can't, no, but you can't see it's not. Okay, so the point is that's because you can't see the hashes right there. So can, can who can tell me why I can't see the hashes right there in NTC password file? Huh? No. Nobody else? So this is a jailbroken phone because I changed my default password. Because when you change your default password on iOS, I know until 6, you can see the, pas the password files will not be the ETC password anymore. It will be the master.password. So then you can see the, the hashes. Uh, until there, you can see that you, if you were doing in a, in a regular phone, in a phone that's not jailbroken, you see the hashes. And if you uh, crack it, you see the, the real password. It's kind of 
different, right? So they change it after all. So this is the advisors that we're releasing today for Wi-Fi AD free path, uh, uh, Wi-Fi AD free. So this is the one vendor that fixed the vulnerability. Then we have FTP drive, and we have easy file manager path. path controller. So, so this is the CVS that we're releasing today. And these are the vulnerability. Well, and you also, as I said to you, you also want to test the application that you use. If you use some application, take a look. It's probably vulnerable. Um, as you can, as you see in in this presentation, I will explain you that uh, iOS 7 add another security layer to the to the iOS. I'm not a research. I'm a penetration test, so I I did not did a deep research about this, but we will see how it works. Well, I just did that. So then we got the fun. So we got an authorized access to file system on Easy File Manager, besides the fact that it's, it is vulnerable to path transversal. So I will show you how it works. So I'm not doing this live, but you can imagine it done this recorded, it's a pain in the ass. Done this rec live. Okay. You can see that, right? Yeah. Good enough? So, as you can see, I will demonstrate here for you. So, this is the, the application that I was talking about, the Easy File Manager. And as you can see there, I'm accessing and utilizing the public IP. So, if you're using this application and you're running and you have some... Um, okay, I have to stop it. And you... And you're running... And you're running using, utilizing GSM, utilizing the 4G, etc. You can access this application even it's utilizing the public IP. That's serious, right? So going ahead, we have that. If you can take a look, you can see that in the URL you have the VAR mobile applications, the idea of the application. So that's so stupid. And then. If you take a look, that works. So it's running. It's a little bit slow because I'm utilizing the public IP and there in Brazil. The so you know, uh, there I could I could access the the folder from the application, and then if I go back, I can see all the file systems. Going ahead, I could I could go to the applications. You know, and utilizing this application, I can delete files and also upload files. So this is a big deal, right? Or no? Okay. So then, so this is what you can get utilizing just a non jailbroken iPhone or uh, just regular iPhone. You can. As you can, I just demonstrate that you can access the own folder of the application, and also if you have the skills, thing that I don't, you can infect the file. You can, I don't know, you can do whatever imagination lets you do. So uh, then. Okay. So as I said, it get it get worse when you have a jailbroken device. 
I'll show you another demonstration. And you see how it can be done. One idea what can be done with a jailbroken iPhone. So as you can see, I'm accessing the same application. I'm taking a look on some folders. Just to make sure that it's all working. And there, we have the same problem in URL. You can access deleting the, the folder and where you can get. So there we go. We can access the applications folder and see all the applications over there. In this case, Angry Birds. So you can infect this file and then compromise the phone. You can do whatever you want. However, I took the easiest way. Ah, for sure, it's not, uh, it's, <laughs> it's not easy to find whatever uh, what I'm demonstrating right now. But yeah, take a look. Wow, they have a web server running there. Mm, that sounds interesting, right? So I can go there. I will check. Whoa, it's working, the web server on the iPhone. Whoa, it gets better. It's running PHP. Wow, this is the perfect scenario, right? So what I did, I just uploaded a PHP shell. And I was, I'm going to do, whoa, nice. Let's say it's working. Whoa, that sounds good, right? Whoa, it's listing files. So it's all over. It's good. Whoa, it doesn't deserve applause on this. So as you can see, it's totally compromised. So in the end, uh, if you have a jailbroken device and you have this kind of application installed and someone took advantage, you can do a lot of stuff. This is just the point of the iceberg. You know, I took the, as I said, I took the easiest way for doing that, but you can just infect a file. We have just a lot of talks talking about infecting iOS binaries and infect iOS uh, applications. And you can actually use those techniques in doing there. As, as you can see, you can upload the file as well. So you can upload, delete. So you're free for doing whatever you want. As you can see, uh, we're running as mobile, not root, of course. But as you know, with the iPhone J broken, you don't need it, anything else, right? So as I just <laughs> showed you. So, um, well, I just talked about the recom remote command execution, and as I promised, um, I tried this with the iOS 7. Can you see? So, utilizing iOS 7, uh, for sure, increasingly, the security, the security on the iOS, as you probably will see, the application is not is not fixed, but and you have the same vulnerabilities as well. If you download right now the Easy File Manager, it's as you can see right now, so it did not change it. So as I was trying, I was trying to access uh, folders that I used to have access using iOS 6, but I'm not anymore. So iOS 7 bring us. Uh, another level of security, and now the only thing that I can access uh, when the iPhone is jailbroken is the the folder from the application. So as you can see, there is the only thing that I can access, which is the vulnerabilities. It is still uh, a, a, a thing that we have to worry about, you know, but uh, not that not that bad anymore, just because of Apple. So, so this is uh, a little bit. You, are you familiar with the MDNS protocol? No. So MDNS protocol is a protocol that's just uh, public to just publish it to broadcast uh, what ports are you using and. Um, and 
you know, if you are in a wireless connection, you just use this MDNS watch for LS, and you can see everybody. For example, there, I, if I act, I can see that uh, I have a SSH open in that computer. Apple works with this MDNS uh, protocol, you know? So, in a bunch of these applications also disclose themselves, which is in MDNS. So, if you're taking around and looking at the wireless and you see a World Wide Web HTML or a web server, and you can see that it's a, if they're, if you're there, if they're utilizing this application, you can probably access and able to compromise. Okay, so from this, people, we have some conclusions. Um, Mobile applications already are the future, and um, so everybody knows about that. You know, that's I don't know why it put there. You know, mobile application designers they still do not care too much about security. That's very true, man. If you take a look on the applications that you usually use, or the applications that your bank, or I don't know. Any application that you use, if you if you do a deep inspection, a, ah, a overview on it, you will find some flaws. Too many applications. As I said, when you when you uh, when you do a search on iTunes Store, you will find a lot of stuff. So, and a bunch of vendors is not no, they just want to be downloaded for some reason, you know, and or they want to. Uh, get paid, you know. So there are too many applications, and we have to take care. And it's still old-fashioned vulnerabilities still rock. So you have a lot of vulnerabilities now. Uh, here is the the best uh, place for talking about that because we're talking about application security, and this is a shame, right? So that's basically what I get from you today. So, but we still have one thing that's not related to this talk. That's a very important thing to me, and I want to share with you. Uh, just one minute. Well, now I want all of you to keep your uh, iPhones and cameras. Please, all of you. All of you took your cameras. I want to see a lot of pictures from this moment. True, I want to see you. I want to see a lot of pictures from this moment. It's a moment very important in my life. Probably not for you, not probably for anybody else. But it's important for you, for me. And I did. I yeah, a homenage para você, amor. I'm gonna speak in Portuguese because, but you understand because of the pictures, of, right? So, you sabe que eu te amo muito. A gente já passou por muitos momentos juntos. E, meu amor, eu quero que... Eu quero passar o resto da minha vida com você. Você quer casar comigo?
She didn't say yes already. Will you marry me? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, guys. 